welcome to From the South. I'm Laura Prada from our Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with our news. You stay with us. We begin with our news in Venezuela during this Thursday briefing session by the Presidential Commission for the Control and Prevention of COVID-19. Venezuelan Vice President Delcy Rodriguez informed of two new cases and a death caused by the pandemic. Venezuela today has two new cases of the coronavirus detected in the state of Trujillo. With deep regret, we must also inform everyone that one of those cases passed away today. We extend our condolence to the patient's family, his friends, and the community in general. Vice President stated, reveal the real intentions behind U.S. President Donald Trump's invasion threats to Venezuela. El día de ayer él dijo, On April 1st, President Trump announced that he is launching an operation in the Caribbean to protect the people of the United States from alleged drug trafficking. That is pure hypocrisy a double standard. Political selectivity to accomplish goals that have nothing to do with protecting the people of the United States. If they want to protect their people, they should prevent the massive layoff happening now. Why does he behave in such an irrational and indolent way to downplay the effects of the pandemic? Why did he not approve appropriate and early measures to slow down the outbreak? Meanwhile, the Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zaharova in an online briefing condemned recent U.S. sanctions against Venezuela and the political harassment in the midst of COVID-19 health crisis. We see that the fight against coronavirus has joined efforts of all groups of population and political forces. We have been talking about this for a long period of time, but still we see that certain political groups are following the logic of opportunism and opportunistic trend in Venezuela to get to more political scores. They are just trying to inflict the serious blood in the country and its people because the idea of a coup d'etat which will topple the current president of the country is still supported by some people in this country. Russia also rejected that the United States political maneuvers against Venezuela, including accusations of drug trafficking against its leadership in the midst of the world tragedy caused by the SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. We stand against blocking the support that should be provided by the International Monetary Fund and we stand against any other measures imposed against Venezuela, but at the same time, Washington has announced a plan to settle a station in Venezuela and to establish a special transitional government. We have also received information that they want to deploy any drug operation in Latin America by using U.S. Navy only, and we have nothing to do in these days. The statement of the State Department on this matter just after is that we have to repeat the true fact that we have been talking about only as sovereign people can determine the future or the basis of the law and without destructing interferences from outside. I would like to remind to those that it's only of the key of democracy. Meanwhile, Cuba's Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez condemned the military deployment announced by United States in the Caribbean to fight drug trafficking. The diplomat said military operation announced by U.S. government involving deployment of warships near Venezuela and special troops movements is a serious threat to peace of all in the region alleged com combat of drug trafficking is just an opportunistic pretext. In relation to the military actions announced by Donald Trump's government against Venezuela, former Under Secretary General and Executive Director of Office for Drug Control and Crime Prevention for United Nations, Pino Arlaki, rejected the arguments that support the U.S. armed operation claiming drug trafficking. Absolutely zero evidence 
There is no evidence. There is no coherence in what the United States Drug Control Agency says. If you look at the document of the DEA, you can see they don't mention anything about drug trafficking or organized crime in Venezuela. Everyone knows the cocaine is mainly produced in Colombia, from where it goes to the United States through Central America, mostly aided by drug traffickers in Mexico. Even babies know about drug trafficking. Everyone knows that 96% of the cocaine is trafficked from Colombia and the rest is divided among other countries in Central America. Everyone knows. In several years, I never heard of Venezuela in this context. I've never been to Venezuela during my time in the United Nations office. I have been many times to Colombia, Bolivia, Peru, Brazil, but never to Venezuela because there was no reason to go there. As such, I don't agree with what I've heard about Venezuela. And meanwhile, in Ecuador, President Lenin Moreno has admitted that official statistics about the number of COVID-19 cases in the country fall short from reality. Don't minimize the severity of this crisis. I have asked that all information, however painful it may be, be made public. We have to tell the truth. We are aware that official records fall short regarding COVID-19 cases and deaths. The reality always outgrows the numbers of tests and the speed in which attention is drawn. Other countries have suffered from it and now it happened to Ecuador especially in Guayaquil. According to scientists, we have thousands of infections and hundreds of people dead due to the virus, although some cases are reported as a suspicion. Ecuador has quickly become the worst hit country in the region, yet many agricultural producers, especially from indigenous communities, continue to work to provide for the rest of the country despite the risk of getting infected. Ecuador's national indigenous umbrella organization, CONAIE, has been coordinating a nationwide response to the crisis. We don't have such resources as the government, but we have done all that we could to coordinate with all of our organizations, for example, in the Cotopaxi province, where the president of the indigenous movement of Cotopaxi is also implementing a community action plan to help our brothers and sisters living in the cities, and in other provinces as well. From Bolivar to the Ecuadorian coast, and at Conaye, we are also collaborating with indigenous machachi organizations in Mejia Canton to create a small food bank where those in most need can request basic food items. Thanks to this collective work, we have managed to help some 200 families in the last few days. And in Peru, President Martin Vizcarra announced new measures to prevent social gatherings as the country has recorded 1,414 confirmed cases. On Monday, Wednesday and Friday, only men are allowed to go out. On Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday, only women are allowed. This restriction will be until Sunday, April 12th, and on Sundays, the restriction is for everyone. Like this, we go for a first break. Remember, follow us on Twitter at Telesur English and on my account at Laura P. Telesur. We'll be right back. We are back with our news in the Caribbean. Puerto Rico's Department of Health estimates that the country will reach peak coronavirus infections on May 8th. The information was released by the Secretary of Health, Lorenzo Gonzalez, who indicated that this will be known after officials begin tracking infected people in the island two weeks after the detection of the first case. The official added that testing will be carried out in the eight regions of the island and urged Puerto Ricans to comply with prevention measures decreed by the government to expedite the process and prevent the spread of the virus. Puerto Rico so far has confirmed 286 cases of COVID-19 and 11 deaths. Jamaica's COVID-19 cases have risen to 44, with three deaths, according to the Minister of Health. And there are 21 females and 23 males who have been confirmed as having COVID-19 to date. 
In the meantime, we have 44 persons who are currently in isolation. 24 persons are under quarantine in a government facility. In addition, of course, to the 140 Cuban health professionals who are being quarantined, I think, until this weekend, uh, when they will be allowed to, re to engage the public health system to bolster our frontline defense. Moving on, at least 250 migrants from countries including Nigeria, Ghana and Burkina Faso wait to be transported to the city of Agadez in Niger for a 14-day quarantine after they were abandoned by smugglers last week amid a coronavirus lockdown near Madama, close to the border with Libya, according to Barbara Ridge. The International Organization for Migration Mission Chief in Niger, the IOM provided food and water to the group, including 104 Nigerians, 53 Ghanians, and 34 Burkinabes, who were rescued last week. They were transported from near the Libyan border to Agadez and housed in a football stadium for 14 days. The Malian government has announced the turnout for the, the legislative elections held on March 29th was 35.73% despite the COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to congratulate all those who contributed to the smooth running of the vote throughout the country. Turnout is still a challenge in our democracy. In spite of the awareness campaign and all the preventive measures taken against COVID-19 and the deployment of defense and security forces to ensure the security of the ballot, the participation rate for the first round was 35.73%. Malawi has confirmed its first three cases of COVID-19. The government said all three cases were registered in the capital, Lilong. One of the patients is a 63-year-old woman who had recently returned from India. The other two are her relatives and her domestic worker. With Malawi, 50 African countries have now confirmed coronavirus cases. There are only four countries, Lesotho, Comoros, South Sudan and Sao Tome and Principe, that haven't so far reported any COVID-19 cases. In Africa, more than 6,000 COVID-19 cases have been confirmed reportedly in 49 of the 55 countries of the continent. According to the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the most affected countries in the continent are South Africa with more than 1,000 cases, Algeria, with, which counted 847 infected, followed by Egypt and Morocco with 779 and 638 confirmed cases, respectively. The institution attached to the African Union indicated that 505 COVID-19 patients have recorded, recovered, I must say, while other 229 have died. African governments have opted to follow the quarantine as main measure in order to contain the pandemic. Time for another short break. You stay tuned with us. We are back with our news. China is emerging from the mass critical moment after COVID-19 outbreak while the government continues to maintain a strict control mechanism to prevent a spike of the virus in its territory. Our correspondent in Beijing, Iran Siperasa, has more details for us. Welcome. As China continues to exhibit positive results in the battle against the novel coronavirus, but the Asian giant is staying alert and strengthening control mechanisms to avoid a resurgence of the outbreak. Globally, the number of people infected by the virus close to 1 million and death already exceed 46,000. But in China, on Thursday, authorities reported 35 new cases, all imported, plus 6 new deaths. 
But what is most important is that over the past few weeks, almost no new cases of local infections have been reported, showing that China's strict containment measures have been working. So far, the country stands at fourth place globally in regard to the number of infections, with just over 82,000 cases and close to 4,000 deaths. The main concern for authorities now are the imported cases of novel coronavirus and also asymptomatic cases, since experts believe this could lead to a resurgence of the disease. China is also in search of a vaccine against the virus. As experts from the prestigious University of Sichuan in Beijing announced that clinical animal trials of a vaccine will begin in May. As we know, last month, a team of army experts began clinical human trials of another possible vaccine for COVID-19. As all over the world, the scientific community works relentlessly on around 20 projects to find a vaccine that is effective against the novel coronavirus. However, the World Health Organization has said it can take up to 18 months to approve a vaccine that is effective and also safe in the battle against this pathogen. Thank you, Iramsi. That was Iramsi Peraza from Beijing. And after flattening the COVID-19 infection curve, the Chinese government has deployed sanitary international cooperation in 89 countries, among them Italy and Spain. The Chinese assistance includes four international organizations. In America, it has reached nine countries, 26 in Europe, 28 in Asia, and 10 South Pacific nations. The assistance China is providing to affect countries is a humanitarian emergency operation, the largest done since the foundation of the People's Republic of China in 1949. The United States has surpassed 245,000 infections and reported 6,088 deaths due to COVID-19. The state of New York remains the region's most affected with 93,000 cases of the virus. Regional authorities estimate that the situation will peak by the end of April. Due to this scenario, the Pentagon has said that it will supply at least 100,000 body bags to hospitals, as the White House estimates death may reach nearly 200,000. Meanwhile, US, U.S. Vice President Mike Pence blamed the country's health officials for the crisis. Pence questioned the labor of health officials as he blamed them for a slow reaction against the threat. The U.S. has become the global epicenter of the virus and as such, the White House has been criticized by different social sectors over its lackluster response to the health emergency, blaming directly President Donald Trump for downplaying the magnitude of the situation. The United States medical personnel continues to demand health protection equipment in the face of the fear of being infected with new COVID coronavirus due to the medical care they must grant to infected patients. Health personnel mobilized in front of the Montefiore Medical Center without ceasing their medical assistance to people infected with the virus. They also called the government to comply with requests from medical personnel for a better development in medical care and eliminate the chain of infection by the viral outbreak. It is worth noting that the United States became the epicenter of the pandemic with more than 200,000 people infected. And the second largest shale oil or fracking producer in the United States has filed for bankruptcy fulfilling the prediction of financial analysts who criticized the joint oil strategy of Riyadh and Washington. Whining Petroleum Corporation filed for Chapter 11 to protect itself during the restructuration process as a result of the sharp drop in oil prices. When Saudi Arabia decided to raid its oil production to saturate the market in the face of Russia's refusal to make further price cuts. The measure was supported by the White House, despite the fact that analysts warned of the damage it would cause to the shale industry. The Trump bin Salman initiative was then exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, which contributed to the collapse of hydrocarbons. 
Parallel to Wyoming Petroleum Corporation's announcement, Trump said he is making efforts to convince the kingdom to cut oil production in order to rescue oil prices. Moving on, the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, sent a letter in which she explained the absence of support by the European Committee after 61, 61 days of the two first confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Italy. The letter of the European Union came 20 days after the first Chinese shipment with medical aid landed and eight days after the first Russian convoy of sanitary aid arrived to Bergamo. In the letter, the president von der Leyen noted that Italy have, become, have been affected from the pandemic more than any other European country. She recognized that the response of the Commission came late, thus the consequences were severe. Von der Leyen also expressed that the current situation has pressured on European countries' finances. However, the European Union can help and allocate new funds to finance the cut costs. And due to this threat, the European Union has pledged to rise up to 109 billion US dollars in loans to mitigate the economic impact of the coronavirus crisis in the bloc. The loan should be backed by 25 billion of guarantees committed by member states to the European Union budget. And this is why we introduced today SURE. SURE is Europe supported short time work. It can mitigate the effects of the recession. It keeps people in work. It enables companies to return to the market with renewed vigor. The Commission will provide loans to those member states that need them to strengthen their short-time work schemes. We come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find this and much more other information on our website. You continue with us. The invitation is made with Telesur, connecting our global thousands. And next time, thank you for watching.